It's the misanthropic one, aka He Who Hungers, and I'm back up in this bitch for another rant slash review. Today I want to talk about this album right here, Kendrick Lamar's latest album called To Pimp a Butterfly. Alright, y'all already know who Kendrick Lamar is. Y'all should definitely already know what this is. This is stirring up mad controversy lately. And um, rightfully so. A lot of people have been on it. Uh, Shout out to my man, Anthony Fantano, a.k.a. The Needle Drop. Um, I would have never known that this album came out if it wasn't for you, my brother, because I didn't even know this bitch leaked. Um, I saw your video in my timeline and I was like, what the fuck? This album didn't come out because Kendrick said that this shit was coming out. I think it was mid-April. I forget. I know it was sometime in April that this album was supposed to come out. And when I saw the Needle Drops video, my comment was, what the fuck? This came out already. And um, via Facebook, people were telling me, you know, it leaked, so iTunes was forced to push it out, and I was like, God damn, you know, everyone's talking about this shit, uh, my man Fantano gave it a fucking classic rating, 10 out of 10, perfection, and he doesn't, uh, really budge that easily, he's very critical of shit, and, uh, rightfully so, and then Spin gave it a 10 out of 10. And Hip Hop DX gave it a perfect 5 star rating. Um, so the other day, I went out. I think it was like a day, maybe a day later. Uh, I went to the gym and I forgot my headphones. So my man at the gym, he, he carries spares. So he was like, yo, here, take use my spare. You know, because I can't work out without music. It's just pointless to me. But... <clears throat> Later on that night, I said, you know what, I'm gonna, that's a good idea. I'm going to go get my own spare buds. So I ran to Best Buy, got me the JVC Sports, and I went up to the cash register, and they had these out uh, on the little table where you uh, put your stuff on to pay for it. And this wasn't on the shelf. It was just at the cash register. So... Um, I had to pay full price for this shit. It wasn't no Best Buy price. This was $18.99. And let me tell you, motherfuckers, it's worth every fucking penny. I don't regret paying that much for it. I needed to have it. I did a few, a uh, couple of listens to this shit. And I could see why people are giving it the rating of classic, timeless, all that shit. So, without further ado, let's get into this real quick. First off, artwork. Cover, you got a bunch of uh, Negroes with money in their mouths and in their hand. One dude right here with a 40 ounce and a corrupt uh, white judge. I'm assuming corrupt is, is sitting under, uh, is, is trapped underneath all of them and all these dudes are in front of that White House. Um, you look at the back, the track listing, there's 16 tracks on this bitch. The writing on here, the calligraphy kind of reminds me of um, Earl Sweatshirt's shit. Looks the same. You open it up, very plain on the inside. Even the CD. CD is all white except for the little writing on there. Then you got a, a butterfly when you lift the CD up on the back insert. And you open up the insert here. 
that's the only thanks you get in the um, insert there. Thank you, God and family, part two. Got a little bit of braille there, even though you can't feel it. Got Kendrick over here around his homies. Basically uh, mimicking everyone up front, you know, he's drinking a 40 and everyone's holding money in their hands. More imagery there. More imagery and um, production. Production credits, got Kendrick sitting there among, uh, over a bunch of money. Kendrick again right there. Artwork sets the tone for this album most definitely. Let's get into some of the production credits on this bitch. You have Flying Lotus and Ronald Flipper Colson, Terrence Martin, Soundwave, Rocky and Frederick Tommy Black Halden. Aaron Dobson of 1500 or nothing. You have Taz Arnold, AKA Tissa, and Who Are I. You have Pharrell Williams of the Neptunes. You have Knowledge spelled K N X W L E D G E. You have Tay Beast, Thundercat. Love Dragon. You have Antidote, Antidote, spelled A-N-T-Y-D-O-T-E. You have Boy Wonder, Kaz. Starting to repeat a little bit. And yeah. That's about it. <clears throat> Production wise on this album. Um sound wise, it's very you know what? I'm gonna save that for the um pros. Cause there really is no cons about this album, I'll be honest. Um features, you have the legendary George Clinton from Parliament Funkadelic. You got Thundercat. You have uh, Bilal, Anna Wise, Snoop Dogg, James Font Fontleroy, the legendary Ron Isley, and my girl, the sweet, sexy Rhapsody, one of my favorite fucking female rappers of today. Features, they, they, it, it, a lot of them are compiled on the same tracks, so um, you get a, a, a chock, full, you get a, a shitload of Kendrick on here, chock full of Kendrick. It is chock full of Kendrick. That's what I meant to say, as far as the verses and and, and him spitting. So and I, and I like the um, features on here. Definitely not overbearing. Definitely play their fucking part. So. Let's move forward, okay? Meat and potatoes of this shit. Pros and cons, like I said. Con-wise, I can't even think of anything bad to say about this. There really isn't anything bad to say about this. Pros, everything. Um, length of the CD, great length. 16 tracks, um, production. Production's fucking awesome. Probably, like, these strong, well, this is a great album of balance. This is what I keep telling people, that hip hop needs to be balanced out. Um, beats on here are fucking great. Nothing's fucking boring. A lot of beat switch ups in some of these songs. Um, a lot of unconventional beats on here. Uh, a lot of, it's very jazzy, very funky, soulful. Um, Definitely risky, definitely risky for today's environment of hip hop. I gotta say that. And um, 
that brings me to lyrical content. Um, lyrical content, basically, like I said, if you just look at the cover of this, you would get the feel. It sets the overall tone of the album. Definitely, there's a lot of uh, uh, criticisms about uh, the black race uh, introspectively and um, what we receive as black people. That's definitely uh, talked about on here. Uh, a lot of um, good combination of that, good combination of social shit. Um, Azulu Love, great track featuring my girl Rhapsody. Um, it didn't get sappy with love shit. In fact, um, even some of the interludes, I like, I like, like, um, for free. Because the interludes on here are like full ass tracks. For free is fucking dope as shit. It, it's, it's, I think it's under two minutes. And it's basically Kendrick Lamar, um, rapping about <laughs> this dick ain't free blah 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 and it's almost like a, a smoke uh, uh, damn I'm combining my words a spoken word type type thing or a slam poetry type uh, type track and it kind of reminds me the way he's going at it it's, it reminds me of that or like uh, the pimp rapping how pimps talk you know what I mean um Excuse me. Great track. I mean, y'all already heard I, which I guess is the radio friendly track off of this album, even though, again, that track is very risk taking. Um, the Black of the Berry, dope track. I didn't even listen to that when that dropped as a single, and I'm glad I didn't. Um, Mortal Man, fucking great fucking track. Love the, the concept of that track, but what I love even more is the end because that caught me off guard because if you listen to the whole album, Kendrick is reciting a poem, but in between some of the tracks, he'll, he'll only go like a line up. Like he'll recite one line and then like uh, one or two tracks later, he'll recite the... Uh, that one line then the next line then he'll progress and but when you get to the end of that you realize that he's um reciting this poem to Tupac like he's interviewing Tupac and what was really cool is that they chopped up an interview that he did in 1994 that Tupac did in 1994 and Kendrick is asking relevant questions um to make that that counter I mean that uh make Tupac's answers make sense you know what I'm saying so I uh, I don't know my words cannot bring this CD justice so uh, I'm just gonna skip right to it I'm gonna concur with my man uh Needle Drop shout out to Anthony Fantano um this is a classic I, I I'm gonna jump on it and say it I didn't think that he could do better than Good Kid Mad City but he did he topped it I think that this is fucking phenomenal um this i'm i, I put on my uh, ipod I, I really don't really try to listen to um rap like this when i'm at the gym but i think this this could get me amped enough to to go hard i usually try to listen to more hardcore hip-hop at the gym but i'm gonna listen to it anyway just because i love it that much it compels me to listen to it now that i know what everyone's going through fucking crazy about so classic rating um 10 out of 10 what else you want me to fucking say shout out to my homie kendrick lamar keep doing what you're doing um another thing i want to add is that this is um like i said it's it's very risque especially for a mainstream rapper that's the other thing that i gotta give him props on because this album, you wouldn't really expect this to be a fucking mainstream album, but I'm so glad that this dude is doing it. So shout out to Kendrick Lamar. Um, shout out to the other dudes uh, in Black Hippie, TDE. Shout out to all of y'all. Y'all should be proud of yourselves. This is a dope fucking album, man. Um, guys, I'm, I'm begging you. If you've never taken my... Uh, 
the word before please take it now please go out and get this shit this is fucking great i'm so happy i bought this shit and um that's it everybody else leave your love leave your hate most of all subscribe support dope fucking music and um that's it peace bitches